What the world's number two player, Mary, the number one for the USA, Andy Roddick, who has matured as a human being over these last four years. Well, he really has. For the second season in a row, he's had over 70 wins. He's had a tremendous year, and he just keeps growing, as you said. You know, we first got to look at him when, back when he was a teenager, and he had, this, you know, he's a lot of, look at him. He was adorable. I mean, he had a he had a big game even back then, a huge personality. Uh, he and early on, he let us know how good he could be when he took out Pete Sampras down in Miami. I mean, and, you know, his, just, his emotions and his game just used to spill out the sides of him. Uh, he then lost to Leighton Hewitt, whom he'll play again today. And, uh, you know, again, he was sort of all over the place like a big old puppy. Didn't know quite what to do with all of his gifts. And he has just worked in the last several years to build himself. Now, he doesn't do that anymore. He doesn't flap his arms around the way he used to. But he's much more intense and focused. He knows how to focus all of his energies. He's gotten so much bigger and stronger and fitter and committed to playing, you know, great tennis. And um, and that this is a, this is who we've got. Just three years later, no longer a teenager. He's 22 years old. And when he talks these days, he, he doesn't even look back anymore or even stay in the present. He just keeps talking about what's going to happen the next year and how much better he's going to be. He has matured as a tennis player and as a personality. And he's taken on a guy who does, Patrick, have a lot to prove here because for a year and some, he was really out of it and everybody else was challenged. Challenging him, trying to sort of put him down as if to say, Leighton, your two years of being number one are over. And he this year said, no way. Well, Leighton Hewitt was mature from the time he stepped on a tennis court, and especially on the pro tour, Leighton Hewitt. I mean, this is a guy who snuck in under the window before Roddick, before Federer, and Sappin really came into their own. It was 2001 when Leighton Hewitt playing in Australia in the Tennis Masters Cup. He had already clinched the year-end number one, and then he took on Sebastian Grosjean, the Frenchman, and just destroyed him in the final. So what a year it was. Leighton Hewitt, the youngest year-end number one since the ranking started in men's tennis. And I'll tell you, he was so committed and so fit. And using that quickness, using that speed, and he did it again in 2002. Of course, this is the year he won Wimbledon. It was the previous year he won the U.S. Open, taking on the Spaniard. Juan Carlos Ferreira won the final. This time it was in Shanghai. And Hewitt again dominating at the Tennis Masters Cup and again finishing as the number one player in the world. Now, things started to get a little shaky for him last year. I think it was more the other guys coming into their own, but he had a disappointing year uh, after beating Ferreira there in five. You know, he actually fell out of the top ten, didn't even qualify for the year-end championships. But look at the kind of company he was in consecutive seasons at number one. To do it so young, you've got the legends of tennis in there. And Hewitt, he's got a chance to finish this year number two. He's got to beat Roddick, and then he's got to win this championship to finish number two. And considering where he was last year, that would be one heck well, he's very close to the top in the champions race for this year. As you can see, he ended up number three. There's a lot at stake in this match here. Yes, I know that this is the year-ending championship, and history will judge a lot by what happens here in Houston. But look, it's next year as well, and these guys have got to some extent to be thinking ahead. Here they are, talking about each other and each other's games. I played him three times in two, my first year on tour. When, uh, which he actually finished number one, and then uh, we played once in England in the summer, and I, I, I got him for the first time. So uh, it's gonna be tough. You know, he, he's been playing well the whole year. Uh, you know, we've both been playing really consistently throughout the year. So, uh, you know, it'll be a good one. Against Andy Roddick, it's you know, gonna be a tough match. I won the, the first three matches I think we played, and he's won the last one at Queens in the semis this year. So he's obviously got a lot of firepower out there, and you know, gotta try and uh, block that out as much as possible, and, and you know, keep getting the balls back and make him play an extra shot. There are no easy matches here in this uh, Tennis Masters Cup in Houston. No easy matches. This is not going to be an easy match. Roddick Hewitt coming up. It completed. Time. So heavy conditions because there's a lot of moisture in the air as we speak with this 22-year-old who lives a couple of hours drive from Houston in Austin. Well, Andy Roddick hits such a heavier ball anyway. 
than those late in the year, but I think these conditions will really help him. He's just going to try to make this as physical a match as possible, impose himself in all of those ways, and, and just kind of lean on everything he gets a look at. Well, Brad Gilbert's Roddick's coach, and he was out here very early this morning, and the weather was, was terrible this morning. It was pouring. And called Roddick at the hotel and told him to get over here quickly to get a hit because it was clearing up. So Roddick got out here a little bit later than he would have liked to see his wins playing some great tennis against Henman, Saffin, and then beating Coria yesterday. Matches in the blue group. Merritt Saffin is the hard hitter, obviously. We'll talk about that in a sec as you look at Leighton Hewitt here from Australia, who's, again, as we said, at a very solid dig. It's the final of the United States Open Championships going down to Federer. And he won a couple of Masters Cup events, but in that uh, group, Andrew Roddick played Saffin, the big hitter, played Corey, the defensive player, and he played Hedman, who's a certain volleyer. And then Moya, Federer, and Gaudio, with Federer beating here, but he was the only one. Oh. Hewitt oh. had a terrific summer. Uh, obviously, the U.S. Open final. He won a couple of tournaments, Washington, Long Island. Also reached the finals of a masters event in cincinnati and this this court very similar to those conditions those summer hard court events u.s open a little bit quicker this is a perfect court for leighton hewitt medium hard court easy first game for the australian leighton hewitt and then for love ready to serve The ridiculous and unbelievable one coming up from one Roger Federer. Merritt Sappen is his opponent. That's tonight at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. ESPN 2. I think it was here last week. He played so well in every match. When you started describing what he did out there is sick. <laughs> That's right. Sick. and hard court wins of any player this year on tour. That's the biggest reason why that first serve 138 miles an hour, that one. I'm going away, 135. And we played once this year and that was uh, at uh, Queen's Club, won by Roddick, and before that, they, it had been a while since they played. Leighton Hewitt leading them the 01 U.S. Open. very contentious One towards the end there and Roddick kind of lost it thinking he'd gotten hooked on a call and uh, 
kind of took himself out of that one because he was very close to winning that match. Understand, Leighton Hewitt's mindset here, you two. Um, this is not a bad matchup for him, for the most part. He doesn't mind the target. He doesn't mind a big hitter. I think he might mind that serve a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> if I could get in the way of your chances. Yeah. And then I moved to Austin, Texas. That's mom and dad. And his brother in the middle there. And then they moved to South Florida. I think the parents still in South Florida. They, they still are, yes. But he has moved back to Austin. His older brother, John, who was going to be the tennis superstar of the family and Young Andy just used to hang around tagging along. Andy says that not that many years ago, he was just hoping to get a college scholarship. scholarships with his uh, Andy Roddick Foundation. And he's become pretty close with uh, Andre Agassi. So I think not only has he, has he learned the way to take care of his body and work on that, but a lot of people can learn from Andre Agassi and what he's done with his foundation and giving back to his community. Somehow I think that Andy might go along that same route. One of those footsteps. For set to one Hewitt. I'll reach you over and there to Australia's Leighton Hewitt. We mentioned a couple of times at the year end, number one in the world for Hewitt. He did it in China, he also did it at home in Sydney. Check at the end of the year for an unbeaten winner over 1.5 million dollars this week. And even for these guys, that's not chump change. And look how low he was last year. Yes, he he played a limited schedule because of Australia's success in the Davis Cup and some of his, I think, problems with the ATP and play as many tournaments, which really hurt him. But what a year for him to come back. I mean, he was really struggling. Hewitt with his confidence last year. Boy, has he turned it around. And I think this is a tough matchup for Roddick, Cliff, as you were suggesting earlier, because of just what you saw right there from Hewitt, a good stretch return. And Roddick knows he's got to try to get to net and force the issue, but Hewitt's so good on the counterattack. Roddick has to really pick his spots. Roddick again, the first to applaud. He's been doing that all week. He's very comfortable in his own skin, I think, Roddick. You're talking about his personality, how he's matured, Mary. It's uh, exactly right. I mean, he, he thinks really expansively now about others. He's ready to do what's right for, by the game. A couple of aces, put some back in control yes. of the surface game. Look, guys, remember, it wasn't that many years ago we tried to interview him, and he really 
didn't like trying to articulate no. and put a sentence together. Oh. Now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get, we can't stop him. <laughs> well, there, well, he's so he's so honest. He is. Nice. He's very refreshing, <laughs> very candid. I thought that fault gives Hewitt another chance to break. Brad Gilbert been a good influence on him in terms of maturity? Off the court? Oh, I, I think so. I think Andy's been the, the best influence his, his family. His parents have always kept him pretty grounded. Yeah, yeah. Mac, Jim McInrail, he's built this stadium for Houston and the Westside Tennis Club. <laughs> Needless to say, he's a huge Andy Roddick fan. Andy has played his tournament here in the springtime, the Clay Court Championships, USTA Clay Courts, every year. That's on the clay. He's played Davis Cup, well, Davis Cup tie here, which when it was on grass, and now he's here too. That's a very big hole to Rodick. To the piece, as he was down three eight points. something with his returns. Even though he missed that one, he looked over to his coach Gilbert and said, I know, I, I want to go after him. Glennon, Sherlin, Hewitt. They're around a lot more than Roddick's. Yes. <laughs> a lot. Glennon, Aussie rules football player. His head there as if that's that's the kind of tennis he wants to play. Used a slice back in there too, which gave him a good one to hit with that forehand. The only way Hewitt's going to miss is if you force him. And it sure is nice to see the top players playing at the top of their games. And that's what we've seen this week. That's what we're seeing in the first part of this match. All four players left in the Masters this year have at least have won at least one major and have been ranked number one in the world. Thank you. That doesn't always happen, these things. No. <laughs> Hewitt's got to help himself out on his serve games. He's serving in the low 30s right now. The fact that hasn't happened there in 14 years. 1990 was the last time that the top four players. Who were they, Pima? Edberg, Becker, Lindell, and a 20-year-old Andre Agassi. Who almost qualified for it 14 years <laughs> later at 34. Vince Spady also will be there, so he'll be part of the team.
time giving Hewitt a bit of a taste of his own medicine. See the doubles action here as well. The Bryan brothers took out the world's number one last night, Knowles and Nestor, and taking them Black and Elliot. You were out here last night watching your, yeah, was, your Davis Cup team, Patrick. Boys are all pumped up. They, they won a major on clay. They won the French mm -hmm. Open playing doubles on clay. Great crowd that stuck around, too. They had well over 5,000. The stadium that holds about 6,500. Good value for the fans, those boys. They, they get you into it. it. <laughs> the chest bump. Yeah, the fans love it. I met uh, a couple of guys who were at the club here. You know, they have all four services this morning and have just finished playing on the indoor courts. And they said, oh, we were out here watching the Bryan Brothers. I, I got out on the court this morning. I was just so pumped up. <laughs> and, well, that's what they do. They've got a little bit of work for Luke and Murphy Jensen. Mm -hmm. Two first set on serve. The more Roddick can set up plays like that, that's his one-two punch. The serve it, it gives him the forehand. 30-15. Hugh is doing a good job early of finding Roddick's backhand. Back to you. That last second serve, 124 miles an hour. Hewitt was ready for it. That is in. Terrific point there by Leighton Hewitt on the return half volley by Andy Ruddick. But that top spin lob from him is just the nothing you can do about that one. He would have the best lob in the world, and he's shown off a couple of them already today. Now one to secure the first break. Yeah, just look at the intensity of Hewitt's eyes. You know he's, he's tracking down the ball so quickly. Staying with these shots, and there he thought he, he got himself in his first ace. 4-2 Hewitt. Off a very solid start from very crisp play. 
from him to Greg Ruddick in what is lost third game. So now up five games to two. Ruddick is serving this in that position. Ruddick about to serve here to Leighton Hewitt. Ruddick lost in the semifinals last year. He was taken out by Roger Federer in straight sets, first set in a tiebreak. But and then Agassi played Federer in the final. Federer clipped him pretty seriously, three zip and four. I'm ironic, but he's serving great. And he's still down a break in his first set, 74%. His first serve percentage, seven aces. close to getting a break point. Hewitt's just locked in on the ground. He's not missing a thing. Going to make three unforced errors, the Australian. And there's one. That's the one. But he set himself up in perfect position. Strong number, isn't it? Yeah. Four unforced. Roger Rashid there as Hewitt's coach. That's what Roddick has to do more on short loose points. He's been successful around the net this week. Keep getting up there. Really have to take advantage of Roger and Leighton Hewitt is serving at 32 percent, and he's serving for the first set. Fifteen out, serving for the first set. Interestingly, Leighton Hewitt has got 27 aces. That's second only to Andy Roddick this week. They bowled not too far off as he did in those last couple. Try to slide that one down the line. If he had oh, another look at that one, he'd have whacked the two-hander. Just not of his mind too late. Good smart tactic there by Hewitt. Put the pressure on Roddick's backhand on that big point. That point.
Set point wins it and he has won the first set the semi-final match of the tennis masters cup in houston number three in the world wins the first set over number two in the world in the world. Won the first set six three over Andy Roddick. Well, our AOL between the lines in that first set, and it was vintage Leighton Hewitt. Stretch return, the forehand pass, counter punching, the power of Andy Roddick again. I mean, the top spin lob, he had a couple of absolute beauties, including uh, one later in the set that got him the break. And Hewitt this time with the forehand pass, and Roddick having him on the run. Here's the one that got him the break to go up 4-2. Also, this to me was a key, the fact that he was aggressive and he got that short one as well. So keeping Roddick on the defensive when he had the opportunity to set point now. And this time doing it with a two-hander. Absolutely brilliant defensive work. Lady Hewitt, our AOL between the lines of set number one. And now Patrick is Andy Roddick makes his move out. As you see the statistics there, not, I mean, Hewitt's still at 44% in first serves, but uh, he obviously doesn't rely on his serve to the extent that Roddick does. But what goes through Andy Roddick's mind now? How does he change things up in the second to turn it around? Well, I think Roddick's trying to hit through Hewitt too much. I think he needs to play a little, a little bit heavier, meaning with more spin. With some of those forehands get him up high around Hewitt. Those are the kind of balls that give Hewitt trouble. The flat, hard ones, Hewitt just eats him up because he's so good using the pace. Does he keep trying to come in? Yeah, I think he tries to use his forehand, to, that heavy forehand, to set up a short one. Well, what Roddick knows and respects about Hewitt is that once the point starts, once Hewitt gets a serve back, and Leighton can compete with Roddick off the ground. Absorb all the power from Roddick and then get Roddick out of position. Right now, Andy is playing Hewitt's match.
that, that, that was a good move. Yeah, put a little more spin on it. Too flat, and it's too it easy for Hewitt to handle that ball. What Gilbert would love to see from Roddick is a bigger first shot from Andy, whether he's serving or returning. Otherwise, it gets conversational out there, which is just what you would like. That's that. And it's the view. Thank you. Thank you. Seems pretty, uh, pretty cool, Patrick. Lots yeah. Of pretty mellow up there. He's got a lot to do with his whole business, the business mm -hmm. side of Robert. Yeah. Yeah. So Roddick able to hold the opening game in the second set. Uh, Monday night countdown. All the up-to-date highlights, activity around the league, live report from Kansas City, the site of ABC's and Monday night football games. Monday at 7.30 Eastern, and then move on over to ABC with Al Michaels and Bob Madden. The Monday night game with the Pats, visit Kansas City. That should be a little bit of uh, an offense in that game. Um, Brady and the Super Bowl champs against Kansas City Chiefs. That starts at 9 o'clock Eastern over on ABC. About 15. Oh. 15 more. One to Roddick in the second set. 15. do this, you better go for the winner. Thirty all is as close as he's got in a Hewitt service game. trigger on these forehands of his and uh, just haven't quite been there for him. And again, he's, he's from that position trying to hit through Hewitt instead of uh, getting that, that heavily topspin for him. He's got to think in combinations now, Roddick. Yeah, he can make a couple of those big ones, Mary, as he did on that 15-30 that point, 30-15 point, but that's not going to win him that sort of thing. That's the long as you would hold to an apiece in the second one. So you have one winning for him and two misses. One game away. He would have not going to get you the break. Spot confirms that last forehand from Roddick over the baseline. It's got to be a little bit frustrating for Andy. He knows what he wants to do. 
I also notice that the way things are going right now, if Yip continues to play his match at his level, he's in the final. He's got a chance to end this year at number two, which is a big deal for next year. Because it affects where you get seated at the, at the tournament. It means you don't have to play Roger Federer types until, <laughs> until the last Sunday. Which happened to Hewitt in three of the four majors this exactly year. Exactly right. Only once in the final at the U.S. Open. And he would love to avoid Federer before the final. Way in front of the champion's rest, but what you're talking about is who's going to end up at number two because it is important to these guys to try to avoid Federer until the championship match, and they're close. You would have to win the tournament to overtake Roddick. Hewitt had a big win against Carlos Moya here in the round robin competition. He went down to Roger Federer, took out Gaston Gaudia. That's how he qualified. Another lot. That one just, just missed. Championship at the Tennis Masters Cup, the Elite Eight of men's tennis gathered here. They divided two groups, round robin competition until today, semi final day. And this is Leighton Hewitt of Australia and Andy Roddick of the US, Cliff Brasdale, Patrick McEnroe, and Mary Carrillo watching this first semi final. Top four players in the world have qualified for the semi final matchups. Federer and Safin in the second semi. Ten o'clock tonight, Eastern Time. Federer and Safin. A little bit of talent on display in that one. <laughs> Safin. Just a phenomenal fall, winning three tournaments and winning the uh, semifinals here. It was an acceptable approach to the net there from Roddick, but that's not good enough against Hewitt. been up to the net 14 times and he's only won five points from there. Those aren't acceptable numbers for him. Not too many of his numbers are acceptable, Mary. The good news for Roddick is that much in the way that, that Pete Sampras was able to do it, he can hang around just based on his serve for a while. And oh, he had one bad game. That's why yep. he's down. He had one bad game. But he hasn't made any impression on Hewitt, sir. I mean, he's only won a handful of points. Yeah. Speaking of Sampras, these boys have all been U.S. Open champs. As Hewitt holds on, Roger Federer, who won the U.S. Open this year, to a piece. 
the year before that. Andy Roddick and then Sampish, Leighton Hewitt. Now Saffin. Saffin beat Sampras, Hewitt beat Sampras. And finally Pete won it and said I had enough. <laughs> Walked away. Not a bad way to go out. Beating Andre Agassi in the final. Hewitt here. He's been working his forehand down the line, setting that up. I was talking to Pete about playing in the Davis Cup semifinal, which is approaching. That's France. Oh, no. He knew he was going to land wide, which is part of the reason why he chucked that up so bad. The samples have played in both of the first two matches in Davis Cup that year. Thinking about that this might be it. And uh, he sort of toyed with it for the next really six to nine months coming back. He never did. Love 30. Gonna have been one break in the match. Oh. So he's, I, to my mind, his brain damage is working well for him, so he's trying to come to the net and use it as well as he has been this week. Now he's just kind of left the parish altogether, making bad decisions in trying to get there. Well, that's, those are the kind of numbers, that's 20% effectiveness. And it's not, that's not his, his A strategy anyway. Oh. Oh. That one says, and there's a break to serve for Leighton Hewitt in the second set. He would just the sideline got the set and a great man in the semifinal. <laughs> solution to Hewitt's game. He's all at sea about what to do against this uh, scrapper from down under in Adelaide, Australia. And been trying to come into the net and that certainly didn't work. But staying back with Leighton Hewitt is also problematic. Uh, when you play somebody like Leighton Hewitt who's so willing, to, you know, he's got great traction on this court and he's so Time. quick and so willing to use his feet to win points and keep things alive, your own shot tolerance has to go up. And you have to be willing to play a number of shots before you feel compelled to hit a winner. But the problem is, Andy's, it's not that he's always, he's not missing the winners all the time. He's just missing the setup shots. And I think that's the, the real source of his frustration. Like that. I mean, he, he wasn't going for the win though. He was just trying to find the backhand. sorts of radicals. Nate Hewitt is just utterly dialed into this thing, isn't he? Yeah, he's feeding off the frustration of Roddick. Every time Roddick sort of gets ticked off, Hewitt just, his eyes light up even more. What is the unforced error number for Hewitt now? It's just six for the match. Oh, that's amazing. Against 21 from Roddick. 
does what he feels he has to do to win a point. He's not trying to do much with that pass. He knows Roddick's struggling at the net. So he just gives him, here, here's one to hit. See what he can do. Five of 18 now for Roddick at the net is Stewart to steamroll. Continuing effort here by Roddy to find a solution. He has got to come up with one quickly here for Lothian Hewitt. He hasn't lost his serve in this match. Roddick broken twice. 2 4. shot on this match right here. Bouncing around over there, a lot of this. Let's see. Been knocking down and really put this event together, put this stadium together. Love 30, 2-4. for an insurance break in the second set for the feisty Australian Leighton Hewitt. Got a Wimbledon title under his belt in the US Open, as we told you already. Two Masters Cup titles. He's essentially a point away from being back in the final of this event. from him and he will serve for the match against Ruddick when we come back to Houston. But now he's got a couple of breaks in the second. He's serving for the match at 5-2. I guess it was always in the cards that Leighton Hewitt, who's had a terrific game as number three in the world and could end up at number two if he wins this whole thing, was going to give Andy Ruddick a, a tough time this afternoon, but Andy's this he didn't expect. Well, Andy's given himself an even tougher time. I mean, there's just not one part of Roddick's game that he can rely on. These guys go. I mean, there's just nothing. And he got broken at love. I, I'm trying to remember how, time, how many times I've ever seen him broken at love. All you would really had to be today is quick and solid. wasn't flashy at this play from him. Roddick just has not been able to get out of his own way. Again, uh, just point out that the lack of unforced errors from here puts a lot of pressure on anybody that he plays because that speedy young Australian gets to just about everything. Dean Love. Thank you. Good. It's made 
one error in this set. And I don't remember what it was. No, it was like a 40 <laughs> love, he double faulted or something. <laughs> Never able to get himself in the thick of this thing. Total domination by the Australian. Here from this man, he, as you said, Mary, is nothing fiery, nothing special. Yeah, but I didn't think he was spectacular. But that's, but that's his game, and then he makes no unforced errors, and he makes you beat him, and it wasn't uh, Roddick's day. I thought it was not Roddick's day, and this is too bad because I thought Andy Roddick was playing nice like in tennis to get to this stage. He was, but uh, it's, this is a vintage performance from Wayne Hewitt as Andy Roddick leads the court here. And a lot of success. Uh, this, this venue, but uh, all Leighton Hewitt today. Leighton Hewitt is in the championship match. We take on either Roger Federer or Marit Safin for $1.5 million. We'll talk to him when we come back. 362 win over Andy Roddick and made it look relatively easy today, so he is through to the championship. He will take on either Roger Federer or Marit Safin. He's at courtside now. Uh, very few unforced errors from you. That might be the story, Leighton. Yeah, no, I felt great. Um, you know, I was ready for the match today. I was very motivated out there and uh, feel like I've been getting better all week. Um, you know, obviously had a tough loss to Roger. I knew I had to win my other two matches, get through to the semis. Had a crack at Andy today and, and uh, came out and, and played some of my best tennis. Leighton, obviously you've, you've turned it around. I mean, I know last year you're focused a lot on Davis Cup, but you really fell far down in the rankings. How are you able to get yourself going, get your game back going? and now finish maybe two or three in the world this year. Yeah, well, I definitely felt, you know, obviously didn't play a lot of tournaments last year, and that's never going to help your ranking. But, uh, you know, towards the end of last year, I took eight weeks off between the semi-final of the Davis Cup and the final to prepare on grass. But I think that really helped me for 2004, because I was able to freshen up and uh, just get ready to put a big assault on this year. And, you know, I, I think I've played as well probably the whole year. It's probably been my most consistent year, even when I was number one in the world. So, you know, this year's been uh, a lot of positives out of this year. Obviously not winning a major, but coming awfully close in the U.S. Open. Um, and this is a great way to finish the year. It really is. Well, Leighton, in today's match, which lasted only 58 minutes, you had 15 winners against just six errors. And even though you, ser you were serving at under 50%, he never, he never got a break point against you. Were you a little surprised that that Roddick wasn't able to do anything on your serve and you held so comfortably. Yeah, I felt, I felt like my second serve held out well. He's obviously got a lot of firepower out there, but I didn't give him a lot of opportunities to attack my second serve out there today, and I knew that was going to be a key. I felt like I was moving incredibly well out here today. Um, <laughs> you were. Uh, that's an understatement. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I felt like I made him play a lot of balls out there. I felt like I was dictating play from the back of the court, and uh, yeah, I just felt real confident out there today. Well, Congratulations. Well done, Lee. Thanks, guys. Good effort as he takes out Texan Andy Roddick. Remember, tonight it's going to be Roger Federer against Matt.